Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the College of Arts and Sciences Enrollment Information Webinar. We are ready to begin and are excited for our journey today. My name is Dean Connie Chick-Smith. I'm joined by my colleagues, Dean Corin Fox and Mr. Bo Odom. We are excited about the journey ahead of us as we do all things academic. Today's expedition is an academic endeavor, and our goal really is to prepare you for the in-person enrolling and advising that will occur this summer. We're excited to uh, meet you and have you become part of the UVA family, and we look forward to connecting with you over the summer. I'm going to turn this part over to our Dean Fox. Dean Fox. Right. Thank you, Dean Smith. Uh, welcome all. We're delighted to have you join the College of Arts and Sciences, and we're looking forward to working with you when you come to grounds for your enrollment during orientation this summer, as well as those international students who will work with on July 19th for your online enrollment session, which will also be supported by our deans and staff. Um, I want to say a little bit about the many people that will be involved later on when you enroll in courses, so you have a sense of the resources that are going to be available to you. So you may have seen emails from the College of Arts and Sciences where there were references to an association dean. So let me tell you a little bit about this. Every student in the college is assigned an association dean. And association deans are academic deans. Uh, we provide broad academic and in many cases, policy level advising to students who are in their association. So we're the experts on academic rules and policies and resources. All association deans in the college have doctoral or terminal degrees in their own fields of study, which means we function as faculty members. We teach our own courses in the college and thus are very familiar with what it's like to be a teacher and a student and to be in the classroom. So association deans, uh, because of all of that experience, help students with longer term academic planning, sometimes short term planning, really through all things academic that we do have a particular emphasis on policy. We also connect students with other resources uh, throughout grounds, uh, for which there are very many, and association deans are with you until you graduate. So no matter what major you declare, as long as you stay in the College of Arts and Sciences, we'll be here to help you with any and all things academic um, from the moment you set foot on grounds until uh, when you walk uh, for graduation. There are other folks who are going to be um, involved in the summer as well. Um, so college association deans will be present for your enrollment session, college and university staff, and many student orientation leaders who have been students themselves, most of whom are in the college, who went through the same process that you're going to go through either in person or online, so they will be there as uh, additional resources. All students in the college um, later on this summer in August will also be assigned a faculty advisor. Faculty advisors advise students on academics uh, with a particular emphasis on course selection and academic planning prior to when students declare a major in the college. Um, these assignments for faculty advisors again happen in August, um, so you'll have additional people that will be part of your support network and academic support um, as we get towards the first week of classes. Um, there are also many other folks that are part of your community of care. So I'm going to turn it over to Bo Odom, who's the Director of College Academic Programs, to talk a bit more about the UVA community of care. Thanks, Dean Fox. Uh, I just want to echo how excited we are that you'll be joining us in the fall. Uh, college is your opportunity to invest in yourself over the next four years, to think about how you want to grow, how you want to contribute, how you want to give back. And, and in particular, these four years are your opportunity to deeply invest in your intellectual life. College is so much fun, and there are so many opportunities you will encounter. But I want to I remind you here now, this is your opportunity to grow deeply as a scholar, and as a thinker and to ask questions. And for many of you, particularly our first year students, our incoming first year students joining us on this call, this opportunity to engage deeply as a scholar will begin on day one as you participate in the college curriculum, which is a fancy name we give to your general education requirements in the college. Um, uh, for many of you, you'll be able to participate in the disciplines requirements that will introduce you to the breadth of the liberal arts and sciences. You'll take the literacies, which will help you communicate across borders and with uh, those that are different from you. And nearly every class that you'll sign up for during your orientation session will count towards these requirements. 
Now we, we've reviewed the literacies and disciplines in the curriculum module that you've already completed this summer, and we'll talk more about them at orientation and in the fall when you arrive on grounds. But I wanna briefly mention the core of the college curriculum, which is the engagements. Again, this is an opportunity for most of our incoming first years on this webinar, but briefly, we're so excited to be able to offer the vast majority of incoming first year students the engagements experience. In these seven week uh, first year classes, some of our best faculty from across the College of Arts and Sciences will uh, have designed their dream courses and will ask you to partner with them to think critically about a particular topic or subject. Rather than simply listening to a lecture, you're gonna be asked to engage the content through discussions, group projects and reflective thinking, and you'll be introduced to what it means to be a college student. You'll learn how to ask questions, how to think about what is true and right. You'll learn to debate and how to respect others who may share different visions of the good. And you'll be doing this with other first year students and with faculty who are deeply and incredibly invested in your undergraduate education. And in particular, we want you to get to know your faculty who are teaching your classes at UVA. So my advice uh, on your first day of class or maybe soon after, walk up to your professor after class and ask them questions or attend their office hours or simply knock on their door. They're going to serve as the principal resource for navigating your time, both during your first year, but also the rest of your time in college. As Dean Fox mentioned earlier, you're also gonna be receiving a lower level faculty advisor once you arrive on grounds in the fall. This is someone who's gonna be able to answer your questions about which courses to take during your first years at UVA and help you think about a potential major. And I wanna mention a real unique opportunity to hand select your lower level advisor. You, do, you can do this by enrolling in a COLA course. That's C-O-L-A or COLA. It's a one credit course during your first semester. And these courses feature unique topics, but the instructor of record is also going to serve as your faculty advisor. Um, this gives you a real opportunity to get to know your faculty advisor on a deeper level and for them to get to know you and be able to provide even more tailored advice. So if you're taking notes right now, write down COLA course uh, for a potential class you can sign up for this fall. Also this summer, we hope that you're gonna build a schedule uh, with classes that keep you curious. We want you to look for classes that might be different from what you took in high school. You know, did you go to a large high school with large classes? Try out a small seminar. Did you go to a small high school? Try out a large lecture class, but, but at the heart of your exploration, we want you to enroll in classes that you simply find interesting. The topic or the title or the professor's background that resonates with some of the many passions that you have. So finally, during your time here at UVA, you're gonna accrue lots of different advisors. Um, I wanna mention a few of those. So again, if you're taking notes, jot these down and then Google them after we're done here. Uh, I wanna mention the Multicultural Student Services Office, the UVA Office of African American Affairs, the UVA Career Center, the Student Disability Access Center or SDAC, and the UVA Writing Center. Everyone is here to provide you with uh, advice that you will take as you explore our curriculum. And I promise you the most common message that you're gonna hear from all of these folks is simply be curious. So that's our charge to you. I'm gonna turn this over now to Dean Connie Smith and she's gonna, uh, uh, we're gonna be joined by a few current UVA students to talk a little bit about their experience. Thank you so much, Bo. Just in terms of housekeeping, please, if you have questions, remember to hold your questions until the end. We will certainly prompt you when it's an appropriate time to send forward your questions. But yes, I am so excited to be joined by two of our current students in the College of Arts and Sciences. That will be Carol and Sydney will be joining us to just engage just for a few minutes and give you a close up look to life in the College of Arts and Sciences from a student's perspective. Carol and Sydney, are you with us? Yes. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. I'm so delighted. Just give us your, you know, give us the, the quick 30 seconds major, all of that good stuff. 
Right. Hi, my name is Carol Cho. I am a rising fourth year in the college um, and I'm majoring in neuroscience. And my name is Sydney Swanson. I'm a rising junior and my major is American Studies. Thank you again so much for joining us. Listen, we know you've had multiple uh, sensational, meaningful academic experiences here in the College of Arts and Sciences. Carol, I'll start with you and then we'll follow up with Sydney. Please share one in particular that really sticks to your mind, one of your most meaningful academic experiences. Hey, thank you, Dean Smith. Um, so I guess to begin with, my first year of college was on Zoom, um, and I'm a person that thrives with connection. And so with my first year being on Zoom, it was especially important for me that I built relationships with my classmates and professors. Um, taking Chem 1810 with Professor Dean Harmon has been one of my favorite classes at UVA um, so far because it has allowed me to do just that. I was a student that went to every single office hour, not just because I had questions, which I did, um, but because I craved connection and I wanted to get to know my classmates and professors. Um, I met one of my closest friends during these office hours and we have conversations to this day about chemistry. Um, and maybe we often get too philosophical about chemistry out in the world. Um, I built a meaningful relationship with my professor who, have not, who I have now been TAing for for the past two years. Um, I remember one time my professor and I spent half an hour talking about nature because I happened to be sitting outside for my Zoom class. Um, we also had conversations about research, and this is what inspired me to pursue research, which is something that I'm passionately involved in to this day. Um, and so while I learned a lot of chemistry from Chem 1810 with Professor Dean Harmon, the most important thing that I took away from this class um, is the connections that I made with the people that make my UVA experience. Thank you, thank you. Sydney, please share. Um, so being a student in the college has allowed me to pursue an avenue that is more than linear. My first semester at UVA was a shock. I was a first generation student who was surrounded by people who knew what major they wanted to do or what school they already wanted to enter. Meanwhile, all I knew was that I was pre-law, I loved history, and I had general requirements to fulfill. Uh, but during that time, I took advantage of the many courses the college had to offer me to help make my decision. It was easy to get caught up in the conversations and the mindset of thinking you had to enter the comm or bad in school. However, for me, I knew that I wanted to take classes that challenged me as a member of society. I wanted to learn about the past so that I could understand the present and change the future. The college allowed me to do just that. I took an array of courses ranging from anthropology and cinema to environmental science, philosophy, to learning about the American South. Although I know that if I had joined that in that, yes, I would have learned about public policy and legislation that would have essentially helped me in my pre-law journey. But learning the history of how these policies were created and whom they were created for fed my curated eyes to be more. The classes I have taken in the college have taught me so much in just the 45 minute time frames. They have taught me how to think rather than what to think in all aspects of society, uh, which is why I'm glad to say that I'm a part of the arts and sciences at UVA. Thank you. So listen, what do you wish you would have known about academics in the college when you were first enrolling in courses during your orientation? Carol? I wish that I would have known that there's no such thing as a perfect schedule. Um, there were many classes that I wanted to take um, because there are so many amazing classes that are offered within the college. Um, but many of these I was not able to take due to a scheduling conflict and the like. Um, but this meant that I had to branch out and take classes that I never would have imagined taking. Um, I ended up taking a writing about the environment class where we sat outside by a tree every Tuesday and Thursday on the lawn and just looked at the world around us and wrote about it. Um, classes like these ended up being some of my favorites. And so when I was first enrolling in courses during orientation, I wish that I would have known um, that there is no such thing as a perfect schedule, and I wish I would have approached enrollment with this open mind of mine. Thank you. Wow, Sydney, please share. I wish I would have known to lean on my association, Dean Moore. Um, 
they are the best people when it comes to help planning your schedule and just learning about the environment at UVA. So I think early on, I wish I just would have met, uh, made a meeting with my association dean from the start. Uh, I think a lot of things would have went smoother. Okay, last question for you guys. What advice do you have for incoming college students? You're now the seasoned person. What would you want to tell the incoming students? Carol, start us off. All right, so I have three pieces of advice. I hope that's okay. Um, the you're first a real OG, which... Carol. You're an expert at this. <laughs> um, all right, so the first piece of advice would be to take risks and put yourself out there. I remember being so scared when I first joined uh, Zoom office hours because I was afraid that I would sound dumb or that my questions would be silly. However, those questions that I thought were silly more often than not led to Professor Harmon asking more questions and helping me realize connections between concepts that I didn't know existed before. Um, and like I mentioned, I craved connections. So I met my friend Rachel um, by using the Zoom chat to ask if she wanted to study together. She said yes, and we spent an hour in the dining hall staring at a molecular model of adamantane. I'll leave it up to you to look up the chemical structure if you so wish. Um, but we sat in O'Hill trying to determine if it was symmetrical or not. Um, so needless to say, if I hadn't taken those risks and put myself out there, I would not have the connections with the people that truly make my UVA experience. Um, and my second piece of advice is get to know your professors. Um, they truly are human too, whether you believe it or not. And they have such unique and amazing experiences that they are more than willing to share. You simply just have to ask them. Um, as I mentioned before, I've been doing research for the past two years now, and it is one of my favorite things that I'm involved with at UVA. I got into research though, because of the conversations I had with Professor Harmon about the scientific process and how he loves being able to use his hands to answer questions. So with that, go talk to your professors. I truly promise that they do not bite. Um, <laughs> at least I haven't had an experience with that. Um, and my last piece of advice is to expect the unexpected and also listen to your association dean. I ended up in Chem 1810 because my association dean, Dean Hadley, suggested that I take it and I just simply took his advice. There really wasn't much behind my decision to take this class instead of the other chemistry class that I was enrolled in, simply just besides the fact that Dean Hadley told me to. Um, and so listening to my association dean was probably the best decision that I made because like I've mentioned a million times, Chem 1810 has been one of my favorite classes at UVA. I would not have expected this class to have such a big impact on me, yet it has played a monumental role in my UVA experience and specifically my experience in the College of Arts and Sciences. Carol, I'm a fan of the advice to listen to your association, Dean. High five on that one. Sydney, please give us your, your advice for the incoming class. So I'm going to say embed yourself in all the course material. Uh, give 100% in each course you are in. During this time, you will be trying to decide your major or what path you want to take. And to get the best out of that decision, I think it's important that you really go into the classes willing to learn. So feed your curiosity by giving your all in each course you take. If that is talking to professors, going to office hours, just really give 100%. Thank you so much for sharing with us and being transparent and giving some of your wisdom about the real life and times here in the College of Arts and Sciences. Certainly appreciate you joining us for our webinar. At this point, I am going to turn things over to Dean Fox. Please take it away. Thank you, Dean Smith. And thank you, Carolyn Sydney, for being here. Uh, really appreciate uh, hearing your stories. I'll say a little bit um, to provide some context for how the day will function when you enroll in classes as part of your orientation session. Uh, before I get into some details, so I wanted to provide a bit of like larger context. So error advising an enrollment process uh, for you to enroll in courses as part of orientation is designed to have students work in community. So you'll be at a table with fellow students, you'll have your own orientation leader, you'll have an association dean assigned to that table, and many other folks who are experts and faculty members um, in the room um, to be able to ask any questions that you have and to be able to help you plan for your first semester of courses. So this will enable you to connect with students with similar interests, it'll introduce you to new topics to explore, departments you may not have ever third, uh, thought about exploring, so that's our big goal, and I'll provide just some details so you have a sense of what will happen when you join. 
First thing, there's a few different groups of students. So uh, we have incoming first year students. So for incoming first year students, um, you will have already registered for an orientation session. And outside of our transfer students who were enrolling um, later on in July, um, you'll have a two day orientation session for your incoming first year college students. And we will work with you for advising and enrollment on the second day of your orientation schedule. So I'll say a little bit about what that second day is like. And at the end, I'll also talk about our online session and how that will support our international and great distance students with the same kind of resources um, that will be available for those students online. But first, for the in-person first year students, you will come in to a large room with many tables. You'll be greeted, your orientation leader, you will have already met um, as part of um, orientation. And then you'll get to join a, a group of other students who'll be seated at a table and we'll start with about 20 minutes of interactive instruction. So you'll remember you've seen emails already from the college, you've been prompted to watch videos about CIS, you've been prompted to uh, complete your curricular module about your curriculum, and you've also been prompted to save some key dates. Um, now, as part of all of that work, you've learned a little bit about CIS. We'll actually spend a little bit of time today as well reviewing information about how to use SIS. But on that day, when you come in in person or when you come online, we'll also review key SIS functionality. So you're clear on how to do some of the basics with adding and swapping classes and editing them. So we'll spend the first 20 or so minutes modeling some of that, taking your questions and have about 10 minutes to answer additional questions. And so that you can be sure that you can log into SIS appropriately, be online with your laptop, um, and then you'll have an enrollment appointment that is guided where all of the resources and the folks will continue to be in the room for you until you're finished enrolling in courses um, for that day. So again, coming in, being greeted by an orientation leader, by many deans, having uh, an opportunity to be reminded of how to use some basic SIS functionalities. And then in real time, you'll be um, enrolling in your uh, courses. So this is a good time to remind you to bring a laptop, okay, for enrolling. You can also, in a pinch, use a tablet, although we found from previous experience that laptops tend to be a lot better. Um, laptops are highly encouraged, and the best way to enroll in courses is, in a pinch, students can use SIS on their phones, though I wouldn't make that my plan. Um, so course advising and enrollment, it's important to know, it's it's not a one and done situation. Um, many of you uh, know you've already been pre-enrolled by participating in the pre-enrollment process. When you come for enrollment as part of orientation, that's not the end of the situation. In fact, it's the beginning of your time making changes to your schedule. Um, and there will be later opportunities throughout the summer to continue to make changes to your schedule. So one of the more important things to realize coming in is that you know when you're enrolling in courses during orientation, that, that will not complete your scheduling process. The vast majority of students don't complete their final schedule until about the end of the first week of classes um, in August into September. Um, so you'll have lots of opportunities beyond when you come. Um, specifically on August 4th, all students will have their credit cap raised to 15 units. That is to say, you'll be able to enroll in courses sufficient so that the number of credits or units that are added up don't exceed 15. And then on August 7th, um, that cap will go up to 17. So those are just two additional moments that you'll have to make additional changes to your schedules. And that's to say nothing of the add drop period, which is routine for most students to continue to make changes to their schedule. In fact, the last time I saw the data during the add drop period, we had tens of thousands of changes to schedules across add, drop, swap, um, edit, and withdraw. That's a lot of changes. So you know, if and as you're making initial enrollments in your courses and still thinking you wanna tweak it, you'll have ample opportunity. Now, as far as the central goals for when you come to enroll in courses, it's important to know that most of you will have already engaged with pre-enrollment, and it's okay if you didn't, um, but all students have been in enrolled in courses as part of their curricular requirements, right? So for the majority of you, you'll be looking for one or two additional courses, and maybe you may want to swap out or between some of the courses that you're pre-enrolled in. You can certainly make any changes you like to pre-enrolled courses uh, that will happen during your enrollment session for orientation. So if and as you read your email about pre-enrollment and you looked at SIS and said, well, I'm not sure about that class, no problem. Um, you're in charge of your education and you get to decide which classes you'll enroll in. You'll have ample opportunity to continue to make those changes. And given pre-enrollment, we're really talking about choosing a couple of classes to round out um, your credit cap. 
Okay. So again, you will receive an email about pre-enrollment. Um, and if you didn't participate, don't worry, believe me, don't worry at all. You'll have the same opportunities to enroll and the same credit cap as all other students when you come as part of orientation. Um, so don't worry about that. Um, do remember to continue to check your new student portal and your UVA email for additional information from the college as we get closer to your particular enrollment day. And that's the summary for now of what it'll look like to come and enroll in courses as part of an in-person orientation. Now, we know we have many wonderful international students that will be joining us for session K. Um, you will have already received an email with uh, details about that enrollment appointment. But to remind you, you, you as international students will enroll online um, on July 19th, that Wednesday, and you will have the exact same staff and a cadre of folks to support you um, in that guided enrollment session. So, too, that will begin with 30 minutes, 20 minutes of reminding you of CIS functionalities, clarifying our goals for the day, answering some questions, and then going into virtual rooms to have the same opportunity to enroll in courses. So whether you're an international student enrolling on July 19th, or a student who's coming in person as part of day two, or your first and only day if you're a transfer student, we're here for you and really, really excited to help you get enrolled in some courses. Um, now, via preparation via SIS, um, we're going to have an opportunity to have some students help us with a SIS demo. So I'm going to turn this back over to Mr. Bo Odom, who's going to guide us through an opportunity to really look and see what student SIS looks like. So Mr. Bo Odom. Great. Thanks, Dean Fox. Um, I'm going to have Sydney again join us. And um, Sydney's going to actually share her screen so that we can take a quick look at what SIS looks like. Everyone has a SIS account as a UVA student. If you uh, have signed up, uh, uh, done all the paperwork to become a student here at UVA, you have access to your SIS account. Now, the things we will be reviewing right now, you won't be able to do until your enrollment appointment, but we're going to look quickly at how you can take a look at your course schedule and make some changes. So, hey, Sydney, would you mind sharing your SIS with us? Yes, I can do that. Great. Thank you so very much. So, Sydney, tell me, we are looking at your course schedule. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Great. And as a uh, um, one of our upper class students, you're already enrolled in classes. Um, and so we can see on your class schedule, you're enrolled in some really fun things. You've got introduction to anthrop anthropology. What else do you have in there, Sydney? Um, some American studies, uh, Vietnam War literature and film course, which I'm really excited about, uh, some in war courses. Yeah, I'm excited Great. for you to this there. And students can look at their sis, and you're looking at your my schedule by a button over on the left, right? Uh, yeah. Correct. <laughs> Called <laughs> my schedule. Great. Awesome. Now let's uh, let's walk students through how they might want to search for a class if they're wanting to add classes to their shopping cart, which we've asked them to do. Um, what would you? What steps would you take to start searching for classes, Sydney? So I would go to find classes and then I would go to search classes by semester. Um, I think this is the best way to do it. Great. And this is going to show us classes that are available uh, uh, in different semesters. So you're looking right now at fall 2023. And uh, we know that our students have dinner, gener, uh, different uh, requirements. Some of them have general education requirements, um, particularly uh, some of the disciplines. Help me, let's pick a class that might meet a disciplines requirement. Uh, let's think artistic, interpretive, and philosophical. How would you search for a class that meets the AIP requirements, Sydney? Okay, so I would go to attributes and new requirements right here in this tab, and then I would go to uh, it's right there, artistic interpretive philosophy. And then I would search. Right. And this is going to show us all the classes for the fall semester um, that meet this requirement. And Sydney, if you scroll through real quick, you'll see there are literally hundreds of classes um, that meet this requirement in the fall. Um, Sydney, if um, you wanted to see only classes that are open, could you show us how you would modify this? Yeah, so you would just click right there, the show open classes only, and then you just hit the search bar again, and then it will pop up all the open classes. Fantastic. 
This is great. Let's say you were really interested, um, Sydney, in adding uh, African American Studies 2500 um, to your course schedule. You're going to first add that to your shopping cart. Can you show us the steps you would take to do that? Yes. So you will click these three buttons right here on the right. And then you'll click Add to Cart. And then Save. And then it'll be in your cart. Great. Can you then go show us what's currently in your cart? Maybe we've done this for a number of classes. Of course. So you'll go to enrollment and then shopping cart. And then the class is listed right there. Great. Wonderful. So from there, if you if you're gonna uh, you're gonna start building, our students are gonna start building their shopping cart right now. You have access to search classes and SIS, and we encourage you to add as many courses that you find curious or interesting to your shopping cart so that when you arrive to your orientation session, you can click that right box on the right and click enroll if the course is still available during your orientation session. Sydney, we won't ask you to do that now. You don't have to add that class. But that enrollment tab over on the left has a lot of really important um, uh, tabs. Can you, uh, I re we really want to look at swap classes. Can you tell us a little bit about swap classes, Sydney? Yes. So swap classes allows you to switch classes that are already in your shopping cart with a class that is already in your schedule. Okay. So for instance, you're currently in American Studies 2001. A lot of our students are pre-enrolled in those classes. It's great if you keep those classes, but you can also swap classes out and you'll be using this feature. And it looks like there's a number of different ways that you can swap a class. You can swap it just by searching or by class that's in your shopping cart, or you can even search for a class through its five digit specific number. Mm -hmm. Great, that's fantastic. Um, so if we have, uh, if we just wanna take a look at our schedule, can you go back Sydney and, and show us how you navigate to your schedule again, the classes that yeah. not are in your shopping cart, but you're actually enrolled in? Yeah, so you'll just go back to the left side and you'll click my schedule. And then it'll take you right back to your schedule for that semester. Great. And then Sydney, there's a button right above my schedule called build my schedule. Are you able to talk to us a little bit about the difference between these two? Yes. So Build My Schedule is a tool that allows you to create future potential schedules um, just for later on semesters. Okay. We are going to recommend for all our incoming students to not use the Build My Schedule tool until you're here on grounds. That tool, um, you can put in lots of different scenarios, but um, it also you can also add classes that are full or conflict with other classes. So we really want you to be looking at the My Schedule tab for what you're currently enrolled in. That's if you have pre-enrolled classes. And when you come to grounds, we'll be adding classes to your schedule or swapping classes through that swap class feature. Uh, Sydney, thank you so very much for giving us this little walkthrough uh, and just kind of familiarizing us with this layout. Of course. So we're gonna turn this back over to uh, Dean Smith. Thank you so much. That was phenomenal. Now you guys have a look at what the system looks like from a student's perspective. And hopefully that gives you a little more insight about how to best use it. So we're just about um, out of time, but we did reserve some time for some Q&A. So um, before we jump into q and A, I'm gonna ask my colleagues if they each would give us some words of wisdom. What would you like to share with the incoming class? Thanks. Thanks, Dean Smith. So what I'll say is a piece of advice that I received while I was a college student, and it really stuck with me. And it's figure out what you love to do, and then find someone that can pay you to do it. And figure out what you love to do might mean you figure out all kinds of different new subjects that you've never had an opportunity to study before. You don't have to be just one thing. You can be many things and we're here to help you explore. So we're really delighted to have you. For me, and I don't I hope I'm not stealing anybody else's advice, take a COLA. Take a COLA class your first semester. Take Dean Smith's COLA class. 
Yes. Yes, I love it. And, and uh, Mr. Odom knows very well that I am a number one fan of the COLA. I teach them, I support them. Those instructors become your advisor. And um, it's a wonderful experience for me to be engaged with these next generation of leaders and help them along their journey. So yes, that's, that's my words of wisdom. Take a COLA. Absolutely. I, I'm a fan of that. So now we're going to uh, prepare ourselves for the um, Q&A. So if you have questions, you may certainly use the Q&A function. And um, I'm going to pass the virtual baton to Mr. Odom. Great. Dean Fox, Dean Smith, we've already got a lot of questions coming in. So our very, uh, one of our very first questions, I'm seeing a lot of trends right now. Um, talk to us about our shopping cart. We have asked students to add 10 to 15 classes into their shopping cart. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about why they're doing that and what they should have in their cart? Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Mr. Artem. So We've encouraged you, you know, add at least 10 to 15 classes to your shopping cart for, for a few key reasons. One of them is we want you to actually spend some time searching through classes to get familiar with the functionalities for how to find classes and also just to get a sense of the breadth. We have thousands of classes, right? Even if you came from a, a you know, a very well-supported educational opportunity prior to UVA, there's no way you had all of the course opportunities we have. And so that provides you an opportunity to see, you know, what is available. And then for classes that you're particularly excited in, we asked you to add those to your shopping cart. Now, why 10 to 15? 10 to 15 are there because, you know, as you're, you know, making choices to add courses to your schedule, to potentially swap some pre-enrolled courses, or otherwise, you know, you know, working on your schedule, you may see a conflict between one of those courses and another course that you later wish to add. If you've already done some work to kind of curate a list for yourself of courses that you're really excited about, then you don't have to go back to square one when you say, oh, there's a conflict with this course. I need another course for my schedule. You've already got a nice curated list for yourself there. And so that should enable you to, you know, when you're ready to enroll, to not have to go back to say, well, what might be a better class? Some of the classwork to figure out what's interesting to you can actually be done um, before you come for enrollment in the summer. And it's certainly fine to explore while you're here. You'll hear a lot of us encouraging you explore, explore, explore. But having a shopping cart ready, um, having spent some time in CIS already, will best prepare you to have some deeper conversations with some of the deans, staff, and faculty advisors present. So we're excited to help you at any step of the way. Um, and that was uh, the general idea for the courses in the shopping cart. So we're getting a question uh, that I've seen a couple of times. How many how many classes should students expect to take in their first semester here at UVA? I think we need to change our uh, mindset just a little bit and maybe our vocabulary. It's not as much about classes. We have to remember that it's units. Right. So every class has a different number of units. Some classes are one unit, two units, three units. But we recommend for incoming students that they be around 15 credits or units in that first semester. And we know that you guys are phenomenal and can take a lot of different things. But we do recommend that you stay around that 15 credits or 15 units. And that may be right. Uh, four classes, five classes, right? Don't get caught up in the class as much as the number of units to keep in mind. Great. And then um, we're getting questions about pre-enrollment. Um, so uh, two, two different questions. Can students modify their pre-enrollment classes that they've been pre-enrolled into? And then do those classes count towards this total units that they can sign up for for the fall? Great. Thanks. Thanks, Bo. So I'll, I'll handle both of those. So first, um, and I, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, absolutely, you can change courses that you were pre-enrolled in. You know, the pre-enrollment process is there to support students so that, you know, we can allocate uh, required courses for all students in our curriculum, right? So you start with some concrete courses that you're already enrolled in. If you do find that there are courses that you, you'd rather swap out of, no problem at all. You're in charge right here in college. One of the beautiful things and one of the reasons I loved college and decided to kind of stay is that, you know, I was really um, driving my journey. I was making the choices that helped to cultivate my academic future. So that's a really important part of it. Now, as for your pre-enrolled classes, some of those will be required courses, right? So your engagement courses, there are two engagement courses that you'll take in the fall. Um, for those that have their required curriculum, um, there are two engagement courses uh, that you'll take in the fall as an incoming first year, and there are two engagement courses that you'll take in the spring, your second semester. Each of those courses is two credits, so you'll want to allot at least four credits, right, um, in your schedule 
for these engagements courses, right? For that fall semester. You can swap between engagement courses, no, no problem at all. You do wanna ensure that you end up with two, right? Um, that they're different. And we'll cover this again when you come in uh, for your advising. Um, two enrolling courses is part of orientation, uh, but the general goal is different courses. One's uh, a first quarter engagement, uh, first half of the fall semester. The other is the second quarter engagement, second half of the fall semester. And Bo, I'm actually losing track. What was the second facet of the question? Um, just uh, do, do those pre-enrollment classes, do the units that they've been pre-enrolled in count towards the amount of classes that they can enroll in over the summer? Great, great question. Uh, yes, they do. So when you look in SIS at my class schedule, which is not to be confused with the planner or the shopping cart, think of the shopping cart as stuff you're interested in that you put in the cart, but you haven't really left the store with it yet. Those could go back on the shelf. Um, ideally, if they're refrigerated, that should go back in the refrigerator section. There's my joke for the day. Uh, but the class is not yours until you actually enroll in it. Um, so if you look at my class schedule, it'll tell you for all the classes you're enrolled in. And if you scroll all the way down to the bottom and sis, it'll tell you your total enrolled units. I recommend checking that. Um, I'm not uh, the biggest math person, um, and I think I can add, but I, I routinely find myself um, counting up the wrong unit. So it just makes it easy in SIS. You just scroll down and you look at those total enrolled units and then it'll clarify for you what you can do. Um, so yes, all pre-enrolled courses will count towards your credit cap. Um, and again, as I alluded to earlier, you know that credit cap will be raised um, as we go throughout the summer and you can continue to uh, make changes to your schedule. Thanks, Dean Fox. I, I did see one question about their pre-enrolled classes, specifically about the engagements. One student asked, they have two engagement classes that overlap. They meet at the same time. Is that a problem? What's great about the engagements is they're seven-week courses. So the first one's going to meet for seven weeks during that time. The second one's going to meet during the second seven weeks at the time. So they don't really overlap. They're just scheduled at the same time during the day. Hey, can I get Carol and Sydney to join us real quick? I've got a couple of questions that are directed specifically to our students. Uh, the first question is, is Dean Fox telling us the truth that our schedules won't be um, completed until August? Maybe I'll rephrase that for Carol and Sydney. When do you normally finalize your schedules, or particularly in your first year, when were your schedules final? I think for me, um, probably two weeks into the semester, I definitely use that add draw period to really explore and um, figure out what combination of classes worked for me. Um, but definitely not before classes started, I will say that. Sydney, is that the same for you? Yeah, that's the same for me. I definitely utilize the add and drop. Okay, Dean Fox was telling the truth. Great, awesome. A different question for the two of you. When you've got two classes that you're very interested in and they maybe meet at the same time, or it's the final class you're ad adding to your schedule, how do you decide between the two classes? Do you have any tips on which one you would take over the other? I know that this is very uh, out there. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, as a first year, you always have the chance that you could take the class when it's offered again next. Um, so I think my first year, there were two classes that I wanted to take that happened at the same time. Um, but one of the classes was more advanced and probably I think I recognized that I would understand the material better after I had taken like a few more classes or had more knowledge under my belt before I took that class. Um, and I think the other thing to think about is, um, if there's another class that, um, like I mentioned, uh, I ended up taking classes that I never would have expected to take. Um, you could kind of view those two classes kind of being at the same time as your opportunity to branch out and discover some new classes. That's great advice, thanks. That And that brings up another question, which I'll pitch to one of our deans. Um, what level classes should students be enrolling in during their first year? Um, we have all these different levels, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. Can you tell us a little bit about the differences between those types of classes? We traditionally recommend that incoming students start at the 1,000 level. But listen, there are some 2,000 level courses that once you read the description, there are no prerequisites. So you may be able to take those courses coming in as an incoming student. So it's gonna be really important that you read the particulars, the description of all of the courses. So if there is something you're interested in, see if there's a prerequisite, 
right? And if not, you can take it. If not, if there is a prerequisite, that's an opportunity to delve even deeper, right? Go into that entry-level course that will prepare you for that next level, but you definitely want to read it. Great. Thanks, Dean Smith. Dean Fox, um, can you, um, uh, what, what classes should students be taking if they do have a major in mind? A lot of our students may be coming thinking they might have something that they want to pursue right off the bat. What do you think about taking classes in their major? Great. Uh, great question. So first thing I'd say is there's not a one size fits all way to do this. There's so many ways to explore the curriculum, to meet curricular requirements, to learn about potential majors and minors, and to ensure that as you choose courses, you're making your way towards your degree. All of that can happen quite naturally. But let me say a bit more because that's a bit boilerplate. If you have a major in mind, that's fantastic. To be honest, I'd encourage you, try not to have tunnel vision. Um, you may have been an all-star bio student in high school. Maybe you'd also be an all-star student in lots of other domains as well. Maybe those will speak to you in ways that bio hasn't. I mean, just sort of keep your options open. Um, but if you're thinking, oh, I definitely wanna be a, a bio major, I definitely wanna be a philosophy major, my recommendation would be prior to when you come uh, for your enrollment in the summer, look at the major requirements that are hosted on the department or program's website, right? And in particular, what I would look at are what are called the prerequisites. Um, that language of prerequisite is just the language of classes that you have to take and complete, usually with a certain kind of grade, depending on the department, sufficient to be able to actually declare the major. So it's kind of the barrier to entry of many majors. Those barriers to entry, they vary so much depending on the major and there's no one size fits all answer to that. Some have a whole lot of prerequisites. So the reason I recommend that you take a peek at that, if you're you know, seriously thinking about one particular major is then as you're looking for courses to take, you want to learn what is bio like for me at UVA or what is philosophy like for me at UVA. Your previous love for it may not mean that it's still the thing you want to you know, put a lot of your energy into. So taking any class in that department is a really good thing to do, but you might also choose to take a class that also counts as a prereq. So then you're learning about that department or program and you're one step closer to be able to declaring it if you do decide that you continue to like it. Um, and with that said, um, we do recommend 1,000 and 2,000 level courses to start. Um, those, as Dean Smith you know, helped us to see, those are, are better because they give you such a bigger breadth of what those disciplines can offer. Thank you, thank you. So here's, here's another question. Can you explain the difference between a lecture, seminar, and discussion section? We're seeing those different types of classes in CIS. So what should we expect from those three different types of courses? I can jump in on this one. So we've got lectures, we've got seminars, and we've got discussion sections. We also have like workshops and we have labs. Uh, as as Bo asked, we have a lot of different types of classes. I'll focus on the big ones. So that's you know seminar, um, lecture, and discussion section. So first, the distinction between a seminar and a lecture is mostly it varies a little bit. Lectures tend to be larger classes where the majority of the time for you to learn information is sitting with a professor, right, an expert in their field, um, you know. Um, adding information on top of what you read, like adding accent, adding nuance, providing questions for you, giving you opportunities and ways to better understand or to rethink um, any preparation you did for that class. So almost all classes have expectations for you before class and after class. So outside of class time, you'll be working and studying um, and lectures really fortify that learning with additional expertise um, from the instructor, primarily as a lecture, thus the term lecture. So sitting typically in larger classes, um, some of our larger lecture halls hold 300 students. We also have smaller lectures as well that host like 60. Um, a seminar is different in style than a lecture. So think of a seminar as a notably smaller class experience where you're going to talk a lot more. If you're a wallflower, um, it's good in college to find opportunities to, you know, stretch your legs a bit and, you know, engage a bit more. Um, it's a learning opportunity for most college students to participate. Um, seminars are exactly that. You'll be participating in the seminar style conversation with your faculty member where they do a bit more of the guide on the side and a little bit less of the sage on the stage. So opportunities for you to say, hey, I had this question about the material and, and may I bring that up? 
Um, so those are really um, great opportunities to fortify um, your particular path. Um, now, there are also discussion sections. Now, discussion sections are paired with um, other enrollment components. So for example, if you want to enroll in a philosophy 1010, you, might, you know, you notice I'm mentioning philosophy a lot. Well, my doctoral degree, as I said, is in philosophy. So that's my standard example. Um, but if you enroll in philosophy 1010, right, you'll have two times a week for 75 minutes where you'll be with the professor and the instructor of record who will be providing lectures, um, engaging you in thoughtful ways to help you expand upon your, you know, the groundwork that you did through doing the reading. Um, and then once a week for 50 minutes, um, you'll have typically it's a TA. Um, who's working on their doctoral degree, who's getting experience um, working with students and teaching students. And often the TAs are in a really good position to explain material to students. They don't suffer from the same kind of, I'm an expert and know all the details and I have a hard time making it simple. I myself find that hard sometimes, right? When you've studied something so long. So don't look past your TA. Um, they are a fantastic resource. And when you go to discussion sections, that's your opportunity um, with an associated component to learn more about um, what you studied in lecture that week. Um, so some classes like these discussion sections have multiple components, right? So in the sciences, you may also see like labs or workshops. Um, so some classes have those multiple components. And just as a reminder, you're unable to enroll in one class unless all of those components are open. That tends to be a big question students will ask. Um, good question, Bill. Yeah. Thanks, thanks. Um, so we, we don't have a whole lot of time left. I'm going to try to get a couple of more questions in. One is, um, there's a question about, are there any differences between the different orientation sessions? Someone is uh, signed up for an orientation later in July and is, is wondering if they're going to have different access to classes. Oh, I love that question. I so appreciate that one. And actually, we have thought about the whole orientation process very carefully. So there's no advantage to being in one session versus another because courses have been saved for each session. Courses have been reserved, saved, allocated. So the whole orientation, uh, enrollment and advising has been done with every student in mind so that there's not an advantage for a student coming in on a Friday versus a student coming in on a Tuesday. So no, I love that question. And it's an equal opportunity for everyone by design. Okay, and then uh, maybe a final question for everybody. Um, how do, uh, it's kind of a broad question. What classes should they be taking in their very first semester? Uh, a very broad one. What classes should they know to take? I might invite Carol and Sydney to start with this good question. I would say any class. like. I think this kind of goes along with everything that um, has been said, but, you know, there's only so many opportunities for you to try something new and what better opportunity than your first year um, to explore those opportunities. I'm going to uh, piggyback off of what Carol said. The college has so many courses that you can choose from. And the best thing about the college is that you can take a lot of them. And so um, your first year is the year to try new things and see what you like and what you don't like. So if you're interested in the course, I say take it. Dean Fox, Dean Smith, any other advice? Take a COLA class. Okay, I've said that one already, but take the thing that you've always been interested in and never been able to explore it before. That if they had it in high school, you would have done it, but they didn't have it. And you have that interest, now's the time to do it. I would also say take something totally new, especially if you don't have much of a sense of what it is. And obviously that can be really, um, you know, nerve wracking if you're, you know, going to try to do something, you know, our students coming into the College of Arts and Sciences, y'all are all high achievers. Um, you've done very well in your academic lives thus far. It can feel daunting to try something totally new. We have over 53 degree programs and many, many departments. And there may be subjects that you can study. And at the beginning of your study, you'll first figure out how to pronounce the word that represents that study. Sociology, American studies, anthropology, media studies. Right, so find a course, typically at the 1000 and 2000 level, which gives you more of a lay of the land, more of that survey, um, that's something totally new, and rest assured that most classes in the college are coded for, many classes in the college are coded for multiple 
disciplines requirements and all classes in the college are coded so that they do active work towards your degree. Um, sometimes I hear students hesitate to explore a new subject because they're worried about whether or not it'll meet a requirement. Here at now, all of your courses, right, will help you meet requirements. And most students, when they finish with their college uh, requirements before they walk the lawn, which we've recently just had that opportunity to do, um, they have completed some of these requirements two, three, and four times over. So I would say, with the final piece of advice here, don't worry so much about trying to check all the boxes. Find classes you're actually passionate about because they will actively help you in, in your route towards your degree. Great. Thanks, Dean Fox. Just a, a rapid fire, a couple of quick summaries. You cannot change your uh, schedule right now. You'll be doing that later in your enrollment appointment. Um, classes that are currently closed might not be closed later. So you can still add closed cat classes to your shopping cart. Um, and then you will have a cap later this summer on the number of units you can add, but that will expand over your summer. So you're not going to be uh, leaving your orientation session uh, next month with a full schedule. That will continue to change. We'll open wait lists later uh, in, in August to allow you to jump on wait lists of closed classes. And lots of things will change as you head into your, uh, into, into your first semester at UVA. That's it for the Q&A. Thank you for joining us, everyone. We look forward to seeing you this summer and um, we'll see you on grounds. Thank you. Thank you.